Hi guys, and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's your favorite midwife, Faith. It's been a while I was on this channel, but I'm back, okay? And let's get straight to business. But before we proceed, please make sure if you haven't subscribed, that you subscribe to the channel and then you hit the notification button just so you would be notified of my subsequent videos. Yeah? Okay, in today's video, I would be talking about colors of vagina discharge, okay? Now, in this video, I would also be talking about ways that you can actually prevent um, vaginal infections and for each vaginal coloration um, from the normal coloration, things that you need to do, things that you need to know, if the coloration is the right coloration for the vagina or if this coloration would warrant you to seek medical help. All of this I will be discussing in this video, okay? So just stay with me until the end of the video, all right? Okay, so let's go on. Now, vaginal discharge, okay, is a normal fluid that actually flows out from the woman's reproductive system. This vaginal discharge is as a result of the normal flora in the woman's body, mostly in the reproductive system that helps to fight off germs, that helps to fight off unwanted members, yeah, I'll call them that, unwanted organisms in the body. And then it helps to keep our vagina safe, our reproductive system safe. But then again, in order to do so, it needs the help of the pH of the vagina to remain stable. There is a lot to talk about maintenance of a healthy vagina, but I will do so in my next video. In this video, however, I would be focusing on the vaginal discharge and the colors that could be associated with either normal healthy vagina or an infected vagina, okay? So let's talk about the normal healthy vaginal discharge. First, you need to talk about the color, and then next you need to also consider the consistency and then next you also need to consider if it's slimy or not okay now we have different discoloration of vagina discharge first we have the normal which is actually colorless and sometimes it may be slightly whitish and then we also have the yellowish discoloration we have the greenish discoloration, we have reddish discoloration, we have blue, we have brownish, we have pinkish, and we have gray, okay? Now, each of these vaginal discolorations I have just mentioned, all of them have a reason why they are having such discoloration, and it's not normal, okay? But first, let's talk about the colorless and perfect vaginal discharge that every woman should have, which is an indication of a healthy vagina, okay, of a clean vagina. Now, the healthy vaginal discharge should be colorless or slightly whitish, as I have earlier mentioned, and then it should be slimy. Now, the sliminess should not be too thick, and it should just be light. And to check how um, slimy it is, you could go on with the pap smear test by having a little bit of the vaginal discharge on your finger and then just try to see how far it stretches, okay? Now, if it doesn't stretch at all and then it just goes like dab and just like you're dapping water on your two fingers, then you know it's not slimy. And that could be an indication that you are approaching the yellow discoloration. And I will talk about that next by the time I'm done with this one. Okay, and then next again, you need to be sure that the vagina discharge doesn't have a foul smell, like it shouldn't even have any smell at all. Okay, that's another one. And then it doesn't really stain, like when you take off your pants or your underwear, you shouldn't notice any form of stain on the underwear. That's how you be sure that your vaginal discharge is good and it means your vagina is healthy. Okay, now let's talk about the yellow discoloration. Now, the yellowish discoloration, okay, um, is one of the most common vaginal discoloration and infection, okay? Now, this yellow discoloration could be as a result of yeast infection. It also has this yeast smell in it, if you are familiar with the smell of yeast, and sometimes it may go unnoticed because it doesn't really have a strong smell to it. But then the vaginal discharge, when it's yellowish discolorated or highly white is discolorated, is usually cakey. 
it's not slimy, it's cakey, and it could be very thick. That's how you know, okay, so this could be a yeast infection. But to be very sure, you'd need to visit the hospital to be sure that you run a proper health test and be sure of what drug you should use. Of course, that will be prescribed to you. And then we have the greenish discoloration. The greenish discoloration could also be a result of sexually transmitted infection. Now, that one also comes with a strong smell. Now, if you are having a greenish discoloration, now take note that each of this discoloration, except for a few that I would mention um, in this video, most of them are not really having the bright discoloration in them. So if you're looking for a bright green discoloration, you might not really, you might be disappointed because you might end up having just something that looks slightly greenish and not greenish. But just be sure that whatever is not transparent is an infection that needs to be attended to as soon as possible. And then again, we have the reddish discoloration. While I'm having this video, I would be sharing my screen with you so you would see what I am saying, more like a picture of what I am saying. Okay, so here I have a chart that is drawn, okay, where we have the whitest discoloration, we have the yellow to green, we have the red discoloration, we have the pink, we have the gray, we have the clear, which is the healthy vaginal discharge. Okay, now, so let's go on and talk about the whitish, um, sorry, no, the red discoloration. So the red discoloration usually could be as a result of cervical um, cancer, it could be as a result of cervical infection, or it could be as a result of menstruation, which is the most common reason why you should have um, a blood or red stained vaginal discharge. But if you are not close to your menstrual flow, or if you are not at the end of your menstrual flow, and you're beginning to notice um, a bloody um, vaginal discharge, then there is cause for an alarm, and you need to visit the hospital. In this case, it might not really be itchy to you, but it might have a very strong smell. Okay, so you need to visit the hospital and it's advisable not to begin home remedy when you're not sure of what infection you are suffering from. Then next again, we have the pinkish discoloration. Pinkish discoloration of vaginal discharge, okay, is usually as a result of vaginal irritation. Maybe when you're trying to um, shave up down there and you perhaps would scratch or cut yourself, Okay, now the blood that mixes with the mucus is what may in turn result to the pinkish discoloration that you might see there. Okay, but it could also be as a result of cervical infection or cervical bleeding. Okay, but either ways, you need to be sure that this is not an infection, especially if it goes on to start itching you down there or if the irritation increases too much, or if the blood becomes a little bit heavier, you need to visit the hospital. Because even for cervical bleeding, is usually a very, very serious medical issue that you need to attend to. Yeah, okay. Now let's talk about the gray discoloration. Grayish discoloration usually starts from looking bluish and slightly starts fading up gradually. And you might think that you actually going back to the normal vaginal um, consistency and colorless nature of the healthy vaginal discharge. But then it begins to fade into grayish color, okay? Now this grayish color is usually an indication of bacterial vaginosis, okay? That usually occurs in the woman. And then it also is usually very cakey and then it's definitely not slimy, okay? And in this case, you would need to visit the hospital okay, and get properly tested. In my next video, I will be talking about ways to prevent these vaginal infections. There are actually home remedies that we need to do and precautionary measures that we need to take to always protect ourselves from some of this infection. And most importantly, it's always necessary to be sure to maintain a very healthy lifestyle because what we take in would also result in us uh, producing what we will take out. So it's usually necessary that we are mindful of what we take in. It's what we take in that will determine the level of the pH. And remember, if it's too acidic, 
then there is a problem down there. And if it moves towards the alkaline side, then it's also a problem because the normal flora won't be able to protect our bodies from incoming organisms. And then we'll be faced with infection. And always try to play safe when you're having sexual intercourse with anybody. It's always the surest way to prevent vaginal infection. I hope I see you in my next video, but please, before you leave, make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you didn't subscribe from the beginning of the video and also hit the notification button. And then also in the comment section, if you have a topic that you would want to know about, you could just leave it in the comment section and I will talk about it and make a video on the topic that you would have mentioned. Bye and see you in my next video.